catch me howling at the moon. Welcome back to the channel, welcome to a new golf season and welcome to a raft of new golf product. Today we're testing the Maverick driver or I should say the Maverick drivers because there's three of them. And uh, as ever the, the manufacturers are coming out with new product which promises to go further and straighter than any product that they've ever made before. Uh, Callaway are backing this up with technology. They are talking about AI, artificial technology, artificial intelligence, which is basically helping them design their drivers nowadays. And what kind of advantages that gives, I'm gonna go into in a little bit more net depth in the mean t in, in, a, in a little while. Uh, what I think, first of all, you can see from all manufacturers in 2020 is a big kind of word for me personally, and that's fitting. Um, they're getting away from this one driver fits all, and irrespective of how many bells and whistles you can build into one driver, you're never going to get the same driver head fitting a, a two handicapper with 120 mile an hour club head speed and a, a 54 handicapper who, who's struggling to get over 60. They need something else and, and Callaway are giving them this along with the other manufacturers in the form of different club heads. Um, in this series you have the classic Maverick, you have the Sub-Zero which is a low spinning club head and you have the Max. And the Max is uh, a high MOI, moment of inertia is there very high, therefore off centre hits are going to be uh, forgiven a little bit more, the club head is less likely to twist, you're less likely to lose. Um, uh, ball speed and you're less likely to incur their penalties with side spin. The trick though however is not to get into your head and as we go through the test you'll see why um, that you are any one particular type. Um, I have been quite surprised by the performance of one of the club heads especially and didn't really think that that would be anything for me. But if we just go through this test now you'll probably be able to, to see what I'm talking about. On top of the three different heads, we have adjustable screws in the head so you can change the weighting in the SZ that will allow you to decrease the spin even further by moving the heavier weight closer to the club face. In the max, by moving it to the heel, it will help the club face close a little bit quicker and give it far more of a kind of a draw bias. Uh, that on top with the, the sure fit system where you can basically change the loft and lie of the club also by just basically changing the shaft in the club, you've got a really uh, amazing product where you can do all kinds of things with it. And then on top of that, they're giving you three after work shafts, which is basically top quality shafts you buy off market uh, from, from normal retailers, not the kind of shaft that you'd usually get in a series product. Um, very high quality, the top of the range is the Rogue shaft, the MSI which stands for uh, material per square inch and was for a long time just available on the tour. This is now a standard shaft with the Maverick series. Um, on top of that the, the standard shaft if you will is the Riptide which is an even flow shaft, a really, really successful shaft last year. It really has a great feeling because the flexibility really kind of goes from butt to tip is very, very evenly spaced. You get a really kind of good feeling for the flexibility of the shaft. And then they've also offered the helium shaft, which is a 40 gram shaft for people with slower club head speed because that kind of weight, you're saving weight and you should be able to actually increase 
a little bit more club head speed by using the lighter shaft. But the best thing is really to get out there and test it. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. So to start off with, I'm just gonna give you my impressions of the golf club. And sitting on the ground, this is the, the standard Maverick. It sits very nicely. It, it doesn't look anything particularly strange about the golf club. It's a 460 head, so it's quite big, but it doesn't appear oversized. Um, this kind of cyclone head that they've devised, which is a little bit more, if you look at it, scooped up at the back, which apparently creates a, a lower drag coefficient and therefore a little bit more club head speed, also makes it look really quite a, a deep face driver and a, and, a, and a shape that I've really liked for a long time. The um, the shaft, the, the rogue shaft goes very well with it as well. This kind of uh, change of colour into the black and then going into the black head looks very simple. And when it, I sit it behind the golf ball, I don't have the feeling that the club face is closed in any way. It's just sat there squared up. Um, and it really kind of fills me with confidence. Just give it a blast. And I don't know how well you could actually hear that, but it really does sound the business as well. Um, I really enjoyed playing the Epic Flash last season, um, but it did, especially if I was hitting it indoors and I do a, a certain amount of teaching indoors, it did get a bit loud. Um, this, on the other hand, has got a very, very solid kind of feel. And you can tell that the artificial intelligence has also been at work there, kind of deciding how to change the actual sound of the driver. The people who remember a long time ago when Nike were making drivers and they came out with a box-shaped one that was like, you know, hitting a frying pan. Um, the performance of the driver was great, but it sounded terrible and really didn't do it any help and actually in selling quantity there. This driver sounds like the business. <laughs> yeah, they really go off. And what I do like about it, I must say, is the ball flight I'm getting. Um, it's a pretty direct kind of uh, ball flight and that's helped by hopefully the right combination of kind of spin and launch. Um, I want to be launching it, you know, around about kind of 11, maybe 12 degrees. I hit it a little bit in the upswing and although I've got a nine degree driver here, I'm trying to hit it a little above the kind of the center of the club face and get it up there with a, a, a decent spin number. Um, that particular shot was spinning at 2.6, that's 2,600 revolutions per, per minute. Um, that's a little high for me, but I did get it cutting a little bit at the end of the shot. Let me just uh, try another one. Uh, that's just gone straight down the middle. Yeah, and that's more like it. I'm spinning that at 2.3. 2,300 revs per minute. Anywhere in that kind of area, and you know basically the ball's got the right kind of numbers to give it lift without, without actually making it climb too steeply and to allow it to roll out a little bit when it lands and give you just that little bit of total distance, extra total dif distance. That's another one. It's right down the middle. As you can see, I quite like this driver. The next driver I'm going to test is the Max. Now, when I first put this in my hand, I thought, well, you know, I'll test it, but there's no way it's going in the bag. And the Max surprised me. First of all, although it's a slightly different club shape to the Maverick, it doesn't have this scooped up back, so it won't have the, the gains in aerodynamics um, that, the, that the Maverick uh, Classic has. Um, however, it has got a, a far longer back, and you can actually tell that when you put it behind, but it still looks pretty good on the floor. And that extra slightly extended back of the driver will help them to move the weight away from the club face and therefore make it more stable. So off-center hits won't be punished as hard as, as maybe with 
the, the standard Maverick driver. Um, the chance is, is, however, when the weight goes away from the club face, that that increases then the spin, and that is my main concern. <laughs> the thing is, the ball flight on that one is great as well. Um, I would expect it to be launching really high um, and maybe kind of pulling a lot of the shots to the left, but really, uh, if anything, this, this club is hidden it straighter than I was doing with the Maverick. And just kind of turning over a little bit to the left at the end, so my dispersion is when then a little bit left of centre, which is unusual for me because I'm, I'm usually kind of trying to, to hit a, a little bit of a kind of a fade into the, into the fairway. Now there I've tried to hit a fade and I have actually got it going a little bit left to right um, but that's hurt my spin numbers. Uh, there I'm around about 2.9 on the spin um, and that is just kind of, uh, kind of on the boundaries of where I want to be. I don't really want to get over kind of 3,000 reps per minute of spin on the club and if I'm kind of fading the ball out there then there is a little bit of a tendency to do that. But if I just kind of try and just rip one down the middle. Oops, no, that wasn't it. It's the trouble with human testing. We human beings, when our brain says, oh, I'm going to hit this one straight. Yes, well, pre-shot routine, Jonathan. There we are right down the middle. And there I've got 2,700 spin. Still on the high side, but I could live with that, especially when I see where the golf ball's gone, which is really right down the middle of the fairway. Um, and over the last couple of weeks, it's been incredible how straight I've hit this driver. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's certainly a, a big question mark for me whether I maybe could be playing the max driver and just because they say this is the more forgiving driver in the bag doesn't mean because I'm a theoretically a golf professional that I, I shouldn't be getting a little bit of help as well so I'm definitely going to be playing around with these two drivers a lot more but they've made a third head and that's the sub-zero and the sub-zero um, has changed the screw configuration. It's a little bit smaller in the head, so I think we're around about 450cc instead of 460. Um, you can see it as well when you put it on the ground, but it's not a major difference. Um, but the main difference is that they've got weighting which is closer to the club face. So when you hit the driver, it's going to create a little bit less spin. Um, and we're talking around about three, 400 uh, revs per minute, which will make quite an appreciable dis difference on the, on the ball flight because um, spin also creates lift and obviously lift will help the golf ball to fly higher. If you are launching the ball high with a load of spin, um, then obviously you're going to lose distance and that's not what you want. So usually guys who've got club head speeds over maybe 110, 110, 115 miles an hour should certainly be looking at this and, and if there's some of you out there who know you're hitting down on the ball a lot, you're creating spin through your sw swing path, um, this might also be an option for you. You can even change over the screws on the bottom, move the heavier screw, I think it's a 14 gram screw they have at the back, swap it out with a 2 gram screw and you will actually get another couple of hundred refs per minute less. Um, but the trick is basically, like I say, um, learning by doing, oh, where's my tea? And seeing what the numbers tell us. Straight away, putting it on the floor, it, it, it's, the, it's the club head that I like optically the most. Um, maybe it doesn't give me quite the confidence that the Max does, but the slightly smaller head just looks more traditional. I think I'm a little bit close to the trapman there. Don't want to be breaking that piece of kit. Oh, I creamed that one. Just might 
change the numbers altogether. Ah. See, that's 2,100 spin. Um, and that's a little on the low side. Um, I just basically tried to hit that one straight. Just see if we can just kind of fade one out there. So I'm just going to basically set up, weaken my grip off a little bit. There we are. That's a nice little fade into the middle. Uh, to 150, so that hasn't really increased the spin numbers at all. Um, oh, what happens if I want to kind of hit one a little bit high and a little bit hooky? Just tee it up a little bit higher. Strengthen the grip a little bit. It's actually drifted out a little bit to the right. I didn't really get the club face closed enough on that one. We're by 1900 spin there. What you can see on that is basically that the golf club is uh, doing what it's supposed to. It's reducing the spin. What it's creating for me, however, is, is, is a, a little bit of a lower starting uh, point and the golf ball just doesn't quite kind of stay in the air as long as, it, as I would like it to. Um, now this could be a major benefit like I'm saying if you have a different swing type and obviously a lot more swing speed um, As you get older, you don't tend to get faster <laughs> and uh, That means that probably for me. I'm gonna have to stay around these driver heads uh, Rather than the, the sub-zero, but most certainly for somebody who likes a smaller head um, Who doesn't really have as much problem uh, with off-center hits so you don't maybe need the forgiveness of the max or the or the maverick um, then this is probably the driver for you to try. And definitely try it out with these shafts. Um, the even flow shaft is a little bit more kicky. Um, even in the stiff model, uh, the, the rogue shaft really does give you that feeling of controlling the club head if you're swinging at a higher speed. Although most probably um, you won't have to, have to go looking for the rogue shaft if you're not swinging it over maybe 100 miles an hour. Um, if you're under that, then I think you'll probably find the Riptide, the um, even flow shaft, uh, the better choice. And if you're really struggling for distance, then uh, you can certainly say, you know, try the helium. The helium swinging around about 40 grams. Um, the Riptide is 50, 60 grams and you're coming 70, 80 grams uh, or 60, 70, 80 grams with the Rogue. Um, so the weight distribution on the, on the, on the club changes with the shaft that you actually actually use. Uh, try all three models and you'll get a better idea of which one actually suits you. So uh, that's basically what I've been doing for the last two weeks. So the next thing is to have a look and see what the results were. And I've got a little card here which will tell me, so I know before you know, and, and this is what came out. So let's have a look first of all at club head speed. Did we get any more speed from this cyclone head. And we did, but it's not a lot. Um, I've got 102 miles an hour uh, average, um, it's the beginning of the season, guys, so I'm not swinging it very fast. Um, 101 and a half with the max and 101 with the sub zero. It, uh, really not a world's difference. And, and if you're saying that there's a uh, a mile an hour of difference between one club and another. Um, when I'm swinging at 100 miles an hour, it's 1%. Um, so if you're swinging at, swinging at 80 miles an hour, you might get kind of 0.8%. And if you're swinging at 120 miles an hour, 1.2%. Um, whether that's going to actually give you a lot of distance, if the launch is perfect, if the spin's perfect, like they say, you might get four or five yards. Uh, whether that's the reason actually to change the driver, you'll, you'll be the better judge of that. Now let's have a look at ball speed. Well, they're all virtually identical. We've got a mile an hour, which basically, you know, the club head speed almost has gone over into the ball speed. Um, again, we're not really talking about major differences. What it does speak for, however, because this isn't only, you know, hit out of the middle, is basically the speed that you're getting off the face with this new uh, fast face uh, that the Callaway of, or the artificial intelligence has created here. Uh, let's go into the spin numbers, which is really interesting for me.
And there it's pretty obvious. I think we can see there um, with the 2075 average on the SZ against the 2.6 on, um, on the max, you can see the difference basically between the weight distribution and the, sh the, the shape and size of the head and how that actually has an effect on spin. And obviously, if you're finding that you need to lower your spin because of a high sw swing speed, then obviously fit yourself into the it sub zero. On the contrary, if you've got a low club head speed, you're going to need a little bit more spin and you'll probably be helped more with the max. Launch. Now, obviously, this, the angle that the golf, golf ball leaves the club face will will start give it its starting directory, uh, 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 yeah, trajectory rather than directory trajectory, and the starting trajectory um, combined with the spin will obviously m have a massive effect on the carry kind of numbers that you're getting. And here we can see uh, with the sub zero zero almost two degrees lower launch for me. Um, than the other two drivers. The other two drivers almost identical and I was expecting the max to be popping it up at kind of 14 degrees, a couple of degrees above the, the, um, the, the standard Maverick uh, and it just hasn't done it. Um, so obviously we often buy a driver because we want to hit the golf ball a long way and the distance numbers, and I'll give you the total distance, um, are always interesting. Yeah, and there's not an awful lot to see there either. Um, identical average numbers between the Maverick and the Max. That's amazing for me. I would, would have thought I'd be getting a bit uh, more out of the Maverick. Uh, in truth, I'm getting a little bit more roll out of the Maverick and not quite as much carry and vice versa with the Max. So there again, this is one of the things which has kind of given me a little bit of food for thought. And when we go on to the dispersion numbers, Well, there you have it. Um, obviously, a little bit more dispersion with the sub zero. Um, you're, because of the smaller head, uh, less MOI, um, off center hits are going to be punished a little bit more. You hit it out of the middle, it's going straight down the fairway. Um, but who does that? I, I don't play enough golf to, to know I'm going to be doing that all the time. And probably the bigger, bigger argumentation is I don't have the club head speed for it. Um, my swing, swing is pretty neutral. I'll hit it virtually zero to one degree in the up. Um, therefore, I'm not generating loads of spin on the ball with my driver anyway. Um, so the sub zero not for me. But to actually see that the max is, you know, four yards less dispersion right and left, uh, that can be the difference between hitting a fairway and not. But if we're honest, the average dispersion at 10 yards with the Maverick means I'm, I'm hitting any fairway anyway. And if I get a little bit of shaping on the golf ball, start it down the left side and let it kind of drift back, then I've got 20, 30 yards of fairway uh, right of where I'm aiming the ball. And um, I feel pretty confident with that. The big surprise for me is how good the Max driver is in comparison to the Maverick. Um, a driver which I thought would be, because of its forgiving nature, uh, probably have too many negatives. Uh, but I can actually see that combining uh, what is basically a forgiving head with a with a, um, a stiff shaft, which helps me get the same kind of feeling um, in the swing as I would do with the standard Maverick. I've got to consider that. Um, I'm not going to make a decision today. Fortunately, I can keep these clubs for a, a little while longer. Uh, the big thing for me, though, f is go out and get fitted. Uh, find somebody who knows a little bit about it. Make sure that they've got either a, a Trapman, a quad, a, a flight scope, some kind of launch monitor, which can give you objective feedback. There's no point going out there and, and hoping you're making the right choice. You can see a little bit if you've got an eye for it from ball flight, how high the ball launches. Um, you can actually see if the ball kind of flies a little bit in a straight line and tends to keep going in that straight line then usually you've got launch and spin pretty good. Um, but if you're finding it kind of uh, screwing itself into the air or, or falling out of the sky, um, then probably you've got too much or too little spin on it. I hope this has been helpful for you. Most of all, um, I wish you a great season and I love testing product. I mean, get out there, 
take a fitting, find somebody who can uh, give you these alternatives in heads and in shaft and, and try them out for yourself and maybe even get them out on the round and see whether it is actually going further and straighter than your old driver. If this has helped you in any way, then please smash that like button. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done already. Uh, the little bell will give you notifications the next time that I post a video. Obviously, I'll be back a little bit more often now that the season has begun here down in, in, in Bavaria. And I look forward to seeing you all very shortly. Till next time, bye-bye.